So a few months ago, I made this 3D printable Optimus Prime kit and ever since I posted that video, a lot of people have been asking me to make another Transformers kit and I really wanted to make a Bumblebee figure as well, but I've been holding off on that project for just one reason. There's a common problem that plagues every Bumblebee figure that I could find and it just ruins the way these figures look. I didn't have a solution to this issue when I started thinking about this project, but now I do. So let's build a 3D printable Bumblebee. B kit. Okay, when I made the Optimus Prime video, I was pretty new to the world of 3D printing and my CAD skills. Well, let's just put it this way. A computer literate horse with a Fusion 360 subscription would be able to design it better than I did. So needless to say, that figure has some issues that we will learn from and improve upon for this new kit. But first we need to get some inspiration and after looking at a few shots from the original 1984 Transformers TV show, I think I have a fairly good idea of what the transformation is going to be like. Basically we need the legs to turn into the front half of the car and we need the rest of the figure to magically turn into the cabin of the vehicle. Let's start with the legs first. While the original 1984 toys robot mode looks more like a moderately dismantled car than a robot, it does have one interesting feature. During the transformation, the legs on this figure somehow fit into its feet, which is something I want to do for my figure as well. After a bit of CAD and 3D printing, this is basically what I had in mind. The legs rotate at the ankle and then slide into this cavity in the foot. But there is a problem. This is just the lower half of the leg, and according to some very credible sources, Bumblebee has been known to also have knees and thighs, which will absolutely not fit inside the feet. To resolve this, I thought I could use something like a telescoping mechanism that you would find in one of those 3D printable retracting dog wieners. After trying it out, I think this could work, but unlike the wieners, we can't really rely on friction to hold the upper legs in place in robot mode, so we need to build a locking mechanism. After a couple of hours of intense googling and looking around my workspace for some inspiration, I found this thing. It's called an umbrella? I think it's Italian but it doesn't really matter, all we need to look at is this part. It's got the same telescoping mechanism as the lightsaber but when you extend it all the way out, it locks in place thanks to this spring loaded pin. We can emulate what that pin does with this new knee design. It slides into the lower leg from the bottom like this and when you extend it all the way out, it locks in place. Then when you want to transform the figure again, you can just press this protrusion in and slide the upper leg into the lower leg like this. It's a simple but excellent solution. Some would even call it the bee's knees. Oh, why the fuck would I say that? Okay, now that that's taken care of, we can consider the legs as basically done. Now I know that right now, the feet don't really look like the front end of a VW Beetle, but we can make cosmetic changes later, so it's totally fine. Now let's make the rest of the figure. So for the torso, I want to do something different. You want to give it some big ass titties? Um, no. I want the arms to fold back behind the torso and form the bottom half of the car. Lucky for us, the cartoon version of Bumblebee has literal blocks of cheddar for arms, which is the perfect shape for the side panels of a car. After some CAD work, here's what I came up with. These fists rotate into the forearm, and then the shoulders rotate backwards forming the sides of the car, then these discs rotate forward and become the rear wheels, and finally the head rotates backwards to complete the rear bumper, thus finishing the upper body transformation. Again, I know this doesn't really look like a beetle right now, but don't worry, just like my bank balance, or lack thereof, it's future toast's problem. Now let's connect the lower half of the body with the upper half with some glue dots just to get an idea about the proportions and it looks hideous. It looks like Bumblebee contracted polio and then started wearing clown shoes, which if I'm being completely honest was not the look I was going for. Also in vehicle mode it just looks like a fucking shoe. I think we need to make some major changes and we also need to talk about that issue I mentioned at the beginning of this video because my solution might not work if I can't fix these horrible proportions. 
But before we do that, I would like to thank Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this video and sending me their X1 Carbon 3D printer with AMS. I've been a Bamboo Lab user on this channel for a long time, and I couldn't have asked for a better upgrade to my workshop than their X1 Carbon 3D printer as I start to take on more complicated, larger scale projects. Now, if you're like me, you probably use your 3D printer as a tool for developing and prototyping your projects, and tools need to be reliable, which for me has been the biggest selling point point of Bamboo Lab 3D printers. The X1 Carbon comes with micro LiDAR and AI spaghetti detection, which means I never have to worry about prints randomly failing due to first layer imperfections and calibration issues. Also, this being a core XY machine as opposed to a traditional bed slinger design makes the printer much more stable and space efficient. As I'd previously mentioned, I'm planning on taking on more complicated projects in the future and would need to branch out from primarily using PLA to using more engineering oriented filaments like ABS and ASA and this being an enclosed printer allows me to do that without having to worry about upgrades or modifying anything. Speaking of enclosures, the AMS has been an absolute godsend for me. Not only does it enable you to print in up to 16 colors at the same time, but it also acts like your very own multi-filament dry box, protecting your filament rolls from humidity and your prints from stringing. Another great benefit of having an enclosed printer is that if you ever find yourself in a position where you need to dry filament that's been affected by moisture, you can use the dry filament function on the X1 Carbon which lets you dry your filament rolls on the heat bed. Lastly, let's talk about Maker World, which is Bamboo Lab's very own platform with thousands of amazing models, regularly held contests for creators, and even modeling tools in Maker Lab that enable you to make your very own designs without having to go through the hoops of learning 3D modeling. You can even access Maker World through the Bamboo Handy mobile app, which also lets you send prints to your printer, monitor progress in real time with the 1080p chamber camera, and even record amazing time lapses like this one. Thanks again to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this project. Go check out the X1 Carbon and all of their other offerings at the link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, so here's what we need to fix first. The legs look too spindly and short, and I need Bumblebee to look more like Chun-Li with a Volkswagen sponsorship than a malnourished Sasquatch. But the solution is not as simple as just making the legs bigger, because they're just not gonna fit inside his already cartoonishly long feet if we do that. The other issue is the one I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Most Bumblebee figures suffer from a condition called, um, shitty engineering. Even the super expensive masterpiece figures have this issue like this is the robot but what the fuck is this is it supposed to be a benign tumor perhaps a reverse coado situation or is it a backpack is he going to school do autobots use child labor i do not have all of those answers but what i do know is this my proposed transformation would have allowed me to make a figure that does not have this issue but if we need to make the legs bigger we're gonna need to stuff those bitches somewhere else right and that would mean that we would have to use up some space around the back of the torso and this this would mean that the figure would have a backpack and that is unacceptable. So to fix that, our best bet is to look inside. Now before you go and shove a GoPro up your chocolate starfish, let me explain what I mean. We need to remove this volume from the torso and turn it into a shell, which will act as the new housing for the pelvis and the legs. After some quick prototyping, here's what the new transformation looks like. The lower legs don't slot into the feet anymore, which means we can make the front end shorter and more accurate to the show. And the telescoping mechanism remains the same, but the legs now slide up into the torso like this. For robot mode, the lower half slides out, and then we can turn these pieces by 90 degrees to lock the pelvis in place. And the best part? No backpack. You can look at it from the side without having to feel like you should have bought a fucko pop instead. Okay, so we're done with the basic mechanism of the toy and now we can start working on the details. I made a slightly bootleg looking head for Bumblebee, added wheels and fenders to the front and rear, made the cabin more cartoonish and curvy because real Autobots have curves, and added a bunch of tabs to lock everything in place in vehicle mode. After testing the final design out and making some minor adjustments to the tolerances, we're finally ready to turn this 
this into a kit. To do that, we first need to make all of the individual pieces print in place. And this is one area where I really want to improve upon the Optimus Prime kit. That figure had a lot of ball joints and it's very difficult to add supports to ball joints that don't leave any residue that hinders the functioning of the joint. I looked at a variety of available 3D printable action figures for inspiration such as the Dummy 13 and the Dummy 13 and the Dummy 13 as well. But this implementation by Gabe, the designer of Dummy 13, seems like the best one out there. All of the ball joints for Dummy 13 print with a section cut off from the ball. This means you can print them directly on the print bed without having to add any support structures. Also, if you're wondering, this cutout section of the sphere does not hinder the ball joints rotation in any way at all. Now we can't copy this model exactly because that would be stealing and I exclusively steal from people who can't afford lawyer fees. But we can use the same principles and basically print a ball joint with a section cut off on a platform. This will still leave some residue but since the flat side of the ball won't come in contact with the socket, this should eliminate all of the movement related issues caused by the residue. Now that we have all of the individual pre-supported pieces, we can add a sprue and turn them into a kit like this. Okay, before we print it out and assemble the figure, I just wanted to tell you that I'm giving away another Bamboo Lab A1 Mini with this video. I'll just pick a random subscriber from the comments section in a month from the release date of this video. The results will be announced on Twitter this time so consider following me there as well. Alright now let's print it out and it looks exactly like the cat renders we saw a minute ago. Wow! Another great thing about this kit is that I've made it exactly 180mm by 180mm so you can easily print it on an A1 Mini as well. Now it's time for the assembly montage. I think the robot mode turned out way better than I initially hoped. There are definitely areas that could be improved, but you can still do a bunch of amazing poses with this figure such as the draw me like one of your French Autobots, the Peter Dinklage special, wheel pose yoga, because he turns into a car, get it? And everyone's favorite, the Louis 16. Okay, now let's transform him and check out the vehicle mode. The vehicle mode is kind of a mix of the original Beetle but not quite Beetle cartoon silhouette and the SS86 Bumblebee's vehicle mode and I'm actually quite happy with this design. Anyway, if you want to make this for yourself, you can find the 3D print files on my Gumroad and my Patreon. Links are in the description. If this figure isn't your cup of chai, you can try out some of my other projects as well, which are also available on Gumroad. And as usual, a special thanks to my Patreon members for their continued support. This month, all of their money is 
going towards my massive electricity build because I live in the live action version of biblical hell and it's literally 40 celsius outside 105 fahrenheit for americans with 50 percent humidity which means I either keep my air conditioning on 24 7 or my apartment turns into a two bedroom convection oven mini rant aside I think that's it like and subscribe if you feel like it consider watching this video next and I'll see you later bye you and I we are so random you bring the darkness to the lights play the atom I ignore the fact that this will never last